Welcome to ADP Training, YouTube's automotive technology channel. In this channel, you'll learn all kinds of auto repair secrets, how your automobile works, and how to diagnose it. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to uh, talk about the uh, automotive can bus uh, voltage testing and we're also going to explain how and how the, the the voltage that you see at any can vehicle how these uh, uh, how you arrive at these voltages um, and there's um, there's a lot behind it so anyhow bear with us but first a few basics this is the basic obd2 uh, dlc a data link connector on any automotive uh, on any automobile um, uh, made um, after 1996. Um, in this particular case, almost everything nowadays after ninth everything became CAN, uh, Controller Area Network, which was uh, was developed originally by Bosch. Uh, so now pin number six and 14 are the ones that are going to carry the signal. Now these are the pins mandated by law. Uh, they all have, have has to have a pin number six and fourteen running can. Uh, they may, uh, for example, the slow, there's a slow can and there's different variations of can uh, that run on pins number one, for example, and this, this, and that. We're not going to talk about that. We're just going to concentrate uh, on can vehicles control area network as it is mandated by OBD2. As you've been seeing on screen, uh, this is the OBD2 health meter. Uh, it is a uh, dedicated unit that we actually manufactured and designed and developed, which just introduces in, into the market. Uh, so it's uh, very handy when it comes to uh, OBD2 diagnostics, uh, running, uh, testing power and grounds, and and so on and forth uh, and so forth. Uh, the the video is not necessarily about this unit, but it's just you know basically we uh, some of the stuff that you see on this uh, on this video were actually captured or enforced by the uh, uh, the OBD2 health meter very quickly as you can see on screen uh, this unit it's loaded with a bunch of uh, electronics inside that actually stress um, the power, the DLC power, the chassis ground, the sensor ground, the uh, pin number 16 uh, power. Um, oftentimes you have issues with that and the, and the, and the sensors and the, set the grounds and you, you really don't know unless you actually test them. And they're causing all kinds of problems on your uh, on your uh, readings uh, uh, for the for the scanner, and it's not there's nothing wrong with anything. It's just that you have a a, a, a faulty ground or, or power. So the unit has these big resistors uh, on top, as you see on screen um, on, in yellow. Uh, the, there are 20 ohm resistors that act, the unit actually shorts the ground and the power, uh, and it actually. Um, uh, measures, you know, there's a computer inside that actually measures, the, and there's a screen as you saw, uh, uh, as you actually can see on screen right now. Um, anyhow, and there's uh, there's also other stuff in there too. You can actually substitute the 60 ohm termination resistors with this unit. Uh, it actually injects a voltage also uh, on the CAN uh, signal in case you're missing it. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff, you know, that that you can actually do with this unit, uh, and that it, it actually if it, you need to understand about CAN vehicles uh, and how it, it is structured and that we're going to talk about that here. As you can see on screen, this is what a, uh, a CAN network uh, has, to, uh, has to look like. They're all the same. The only thing that, that, that changes is the amount of modules and this is a simple CAN where you see the instrument cluster, the uh, transmission control module, the ACM, um, uh, th there's also the uh, ABS uh, module in there, and as you can see, you have you have to have two termination resistors, and this is this is basic when it comes to uh, to CAN networks. Uh, between the two termination resistors, if you if you have two resistors in parallel, as you see on screen on this diagram, you're going to have 60 ohms. If you measure the uh, the two pins, pins number six and 14, you're going to have 60 ohms and that's exactly give or take a couple of ohms usually 60 uh, 62 63 58 something like that doesn't have to be exact but close 
so basically you're gonna once you have two 120 ohm uh, um, resistors in parallel you're gonna have 60 ohms across both um, uh, wires you know on, on the can and these are usually twisted pair uh, wires they're, they're twisted and this is to prevent uh, EMF uh, e e electromagnetic interference now it is important that these uh, 120 ohm resistors you may lose one of them and depending on the vehicle it may or may not operate uh, you need to find where these and this is usually the instrument cluster is the one is one of them that almost always has the one one of the 120 ohm termination resistors the ACM normally carries the the other 120 ohm resistor now if you lose these resistors oftentimes you have no communication and if you measure across these two wires basically pins number six and and, uh, and 14 you're not going to see 60 ohms you're going to see you might see 120 ohms or you might see infinite that means you lost both resistors or you may see zero that means you're shorted that means the uh, can network is shorted uh, the two wires are shorted then you're not going to have communication in our video here we're going to initiate communication we're going to show you what it looks like on an oscilloscope and this is probably the best way to do it now uh, but before we go into that basically um, uh, the unit as you can see on this particular diagram uh, the OBD2 connector has gives you access uh, this is the easiest way to give you access to these two pins, pins number 6 and 14, okay? Uh, our unit, uh, the uh, OBD2 DLC health meter, actually goes in there and plugs into uh, um, power and ground on pins number uh, um, 16, which is power, uh, 4, uh, 5, and, and that's it. That's how you, put, you power the unit. And of course, 6 and 14 for the CANT network. Uh, the unit then substitutes a bunch of depending on the tests that you actually pick on your on screen it's got the it has a little screen a uh, touch screen in, in there and you you actually choose either the automated test and it actually runs the, the all the testing in there uh, or you can actually p uh, pick and choose uh, which test you actually want it has a um, like an oscilloscope but it's not an oscilloscope it's more of a uh, uh, graphing multimeter where you can actually see what we're going to see now we're going to see that later on in, the, in this video uh, you can actually see the the, the signals uh, and you'll know right away and the unit is also going to analyze the signal for you this is what's different about this unit than anything else that you you can plug in anything you want like an oscilloscope and this and that and if you don't, don't know exactly what to look for which we're going to show you here anyways uh, but some of you may not really be into it you know and you still have a car with no communication so what are you going to do so this unit it's automated and it, it goes into a uh, a bunch of tests that you don't even know that it's doing it and it, it's pretty much in a, it'll tell you you know if you have an issue now on screen let's start by analyzing the signal that you're going to see either on the unit on the obd2 uh, obd2 um, dlc health meter or on an oscilloscope in this particular case we uh, are going to use an oscilloscope because the screen is bigger and we can actually show you in, in a better format um, basically what we did and you're going to see later on in the video you're going to see that we actually made a virtual can network uh, and this is what we're doing right now but anyhow what you see right now it's a uh, th this is the can signal for both wires okay the yellow one is for the can low and the green one is for the can high now very carefully let's look at the screen uh, as you see it right now on this, on this particular diagram if you were to measure with a with an uh, ohm meter uh, the resistance between the two uh, wires okay not the resistance i'm sorry the uh, the voltage with the uh, with the vehicle key on engine off uh, basically what you would see between the two uh, can wires can low and can high pins number uh, 6 and 14 you're going to see zero volts okay this is important because everybody gets confused when they see it they say well i have zero volts i have no so i have no communication zero volts something's wrong no you're you're supposed to see zero volts in the uh, in the old days back in the 70s and 80s uh, sometimes we used to install radios car radios uh, which had a floating grounds. The speakers had floating grounds. There, there was no gr the ground for the speakers was not the same as the vehicle ground. Uh, 
And so they were, you know, finicky, you know, back then. People would not understand that. And so basically this is what it is. Uh, a can system has a floating ground. So the ground has nothing to do with the, uh, with the battery ground. So if you measure, measure across the uh, can high and can low, pins number 6 and 14, you, it's going to be 0 volt. Now, uh, if, on the other hand, you measure, and as you see now, we, ch we change the diagram, uh, between ground, the actual gr uh, um, chassis ground, which is it would be pin uh, pin number f um, chassis ground would be pin number four. Um, if you measure between chassis ground and one of the um, and one of the wires, um, either the can low or the can high, you're going to see 2.5 volts. Okay. So now going back to the uh, and this is basically what uh, the can uh, protocol calls uh, calls for. You have to have 2.5 volts between chassis ground and uh, either can low or can high. Now, because both wires are the same uh, voltage potential between them, you see zero, okay? Now, um, we're gonna see on screen right now, this is this is the, going back to the can bus, bus signal. Uh, basically, this signal, the yellow one is the can low and the, um, and the green one, the green half of it, is the can high. This is actually channels one and two of the scope, uh, which you actually, you know, if you go into with the, with the unit that we have, the uh, OBD2 health meter, you're going to see exactly the same. Uh, so basically, you're going to see um, the can low and the can high. Uh, it's not really superimposed because they don't switch at the same level. Uh, the can low is going to go between 2.5 and 1.5. We're going to see later on. I'm going to explain that. And the can high is going to switch between 2.5 and uh, and 3.5. Between the two, uh, can low and can high, you have to have two volts. Okay. So as you see, as you can see on screen right now, the can high, uh, and this is uh, basically the, what the signal says. Uh, the can high is at 3.43. On the high side, 2.5 on the basically on the um, uh, on the resting side, and uh, one point the, the low can low is 1.43 uh, on the low side, and again 2.5 on the resting side. This is called uh, the dominant and recessive. Okay, recessive will be the 2.5 for both signals, which is always at 2.5. In this particular case, it's actually 2.43, but this is doesn't have to be exact, but, but very close, okay? This is called recessive because it's always resting. If the can is not communicating, uh, basically you're going to have 2.5 volts, okay? This is uh, recessive. The, the dominant is when it actually switches either low or high. In this particular case, the can low is going to go to one point. Uh, 43 in this in this case you know or 2.43 uh, I'm, I'm sorry 3.43 on the on the can high which is the green side between the the difference between both can low and can high when it's switching has to be two volts otherwise the uh, obd2 the, the the can protocol it's not going to work okay and this is uh this last uh, uh, diagram actually the the snapshot that we have here it, it actually shows you that it, it says you know between the high side and the low side on both signals taken together this is called the delta uh, which is a delta means difference the Greek letter which actually means the difference between the two signals has to be two volts you really don't care much about taking the difference between the, the, the two sides um, because it's ac you're actually going to see it, you know, like you see it right now when you put a scope in, the, in there, either our unit or, or an actual oscilloscope. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, and you have to be careful too because sometimes, depending on the scope that you're using, sometimes the, uh, the actual scope ground is going to ground the signal. So be careful on how you do it, otherwise you're going to go nuts, you know, if you really don't know what you're doing. It's not, not going to damage anything. Uh, but you're not going to see anything on the on screen and then you're going to go crazy. Anyhow, so again, remember that the voltage between uh, the, the center voltage, uh, which is that's, that's called the recessive uh, CAN signal, is always going to be 2.5 volts when taken between the chassis ground and the actual signal itself, uh, or which is the, the recessive 
it's going to be 2.5 and the dominant is either going to be on the low side it's going to be uh, um, uh, 1.43 in this particular case 1.4 so basically you, in this particular example we are 2.4 on the on the on the uh, recessive supposed to be theoretically 2.5 so basically theoretically 2.5 on the recessive which is the center as you see it here uh, and the uh, on the dominant on the low side on the can low is going to be 1.5 the can high is going to be 3.5 okay this is really the theoretical behind the can protocol uh, so between the two you have to have as you see here two two volts difference between the can low and the can high otherwise uh, the can uh, uh, chips you know the uh, the microprocessor is inside that actually detect the signal it's they're not going to be they're not going to detect the signal and this is how you have to look at it otherwise then you, you could have for example a recessive of 2.5 or 2.4 more or less but then it's not switching all the way the, on the low side the can low is not going to it's not switching maybe it'll give you um, uh, two volts okay when it switches low and the can high is going to give you three volts not three point not three point five as you see here then you know you have an issue you could have resistance in the wires uh, which is usually the case in one of the uh, the nodes one of the modules uh, for whatever reason, you know, maybe the, there's a lot of humidity where the vehicle is being driven and this, this and that, and who knows, okay? But definitely you can't have that. You have to have between the two signals, two volts difference. Otherwise, the signal is not going to get recognized pretty much. <coughs> now, as you can see on screen, we actually have a virtual network that we created uh, with these uh, gadgets that we have. They actually, th these are actually can uh, uh, transceivers that we have here um, which we uh, we do a lot of experimentation with these guys now what we did is we, we took an OBD2 connector and we rigged power and ground to it to uh, be able to power the, uh, the the little scanner that we have that we're going to use for testing and then we the, the yellow uh, wires that you see it's actually pins number 6 and 14 for the CAN network okay now uh, some of you have the idea that if the vehicle has a, uh, and we're really going to go into this very briefly right now, if the vehicle has a gateway that uh, all of a sudden everything is lost and there's nothing you could do, that's not the case. Okay, so in, um, as you can see, we're briefly we're going to explain this. We're going to do another video on gateways. So anyhow, a gateway is a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, a module that actually uh, inter interconnects different modules together uh, with the ECM and with the DLC connector. Okay, so the gateway, it's uh, basically, it's uh, something like a gatekeeper. That's why it's called a gateway. And so all the modules are connected to the gateway and the gateway decides who has the access to the gateway. Okay, uh, whoever has the access to the gateway has access to the other modules. That's not so in every single vehicle out there right now. They're starting to do that right now as we speak. Uh, this is the year 2019. Uh, anyhow, so uh, so basically a gateway is a gatekeeper for the different modules. And what it does is it actually uh, interconnects different speed modules. So you have the, the seat belt, uh, the seat, not the seat belt, the seat module, which is very slow. It doesn't have to be fast, so it's very inexpensive module. Uh, that actually needs to need to connect with the ECM and everybody else. Uh, you you don't want to have it in the same uh, signal. That everybody thinks that this is because of security and this and that. It's nothing to do with security because you can actually bypass the gateway very easily. As we're gonna we're gonna explain. So basically, what you do if you want to have access to the CAN network, you you're gonna have to remove the gateway and connect to the two uh, CAN uh, um, wires, the the CAN low and the CAN high. Um, uh, on the other side of the gateway, as you can see on screen right now. So the gateway, you know, restricts ac access to the other module unless you have the right scanner. Uh, but you don't, you know, like for example, on uh, Chrysler vehicles, you remove the gateway, which is right behind the radio. Uh, and basically you have access to, to, the, to the one wire, you know, the, the, the can, uh, signal wires, the can low and the can high. And once you have access to those, then you can actually access whatever module uh, you want. That's if you have the scanner that actually communicates with the gate. But if you just want to see that, you know, that the network is running properly, 
uh, you can act, you actually you could do that manually by going to into the into the wires. This may not be necessary uh, on on the vehicle that you're working on, but just uh, trying to explain to you that the gate once you remove the gate, put the gateway out of, of out of the the picture, then you actually have access to the to the CAN wire, and you can actually do whatever you want. If you want to connect the scanner to it, fine. If you just want to see if you have the termination resistor, which is really what we're talking about here, uh, that's what what this video is really for. And then you, you can actually do that. Uh, on the other side of the gateway. If you know that you have the termination resistors fine and the signals, the signaling it's okay, uh, then basically once you know that, then your problem is it's uh, whatever problem with the specific module uh, that you're trying to communicate with, uh, not necessarily a problem with the CAN network, uh, which is, again, this is the purpose of this video is to make sure that the actual physical um, uh, that the physicality of the of the network it is there, and basically you you're looking for the termination resistor. It has to have two, uh, regardless, you know. And uh, in this particular case, if you have a gateway, you, as you can see on screen, you have interconnections between uh, uh, these guys. They, we have actually three uh, three networks uh, on screen right now. The one with the ABS is one network which has the ABS, the cluster, the TCM, and then the and, and the other modules. And then you have the other one which has a seat, module 5, 14, 11, module 10, and 4. That's another network. They're all interconnected to the gateway. And each one has to have a, a termination resistor of 120 ohm. Uh, and, and two of the, in this particular case, for example, the, the module, the network that has the ABS on it, uh, you're going to have a termination resistor on the gateway itself, and you're going to have a termination, not necessarily, but usually it does, and the, another termination resistor, uh, for example, module 3, uh, the, which is all the way at the end. It could be in any of, the, of those modules, and you have to find out which one it is if you don't have that termination. If you measure between those two and that particular network, if you measure between the two wires, the can low and the can high, you don't see 60 ohms. Remember, it's 120 ohms, but you have to have two of these, okay? And that between the both of them, it's a, it's a, it's a 60, um, 60 ohm, but each one is 120 ohm resistor. So where is it? That's up to you to find out. And some, most oftentimes it's not easy, okay? And this is the issues with m when uh, uh, diagnosing problems with the, with the uh, communication with the CAN. As you can see on screen, uh, this is live. This is actually the, the scanner trying to establish communication. We're not necessarily connected. The, the virtual network that we have will give you the voltage levels and will give, give you the termination resistors, but it's not, you're not going to see anything because we're not dealing with, uh, we're dealing with a CAN network. We're, we're not really connected to a car, and we really don't care. Even if you're doing uh, um, diagnostics on a regular vehicle, you're not, you're not going to look at, uh, see, you know, watch these uh, pulses in there and say, well, that pulse is for the ABS. I recognize that, but you'll never be able to recognize that pulse. You need a, a network analyzer for that, and it's really, you don't really need that. You don't really care what the pulses are. The, for that, you use a scanner, and you try and establish communication. If you don't have, if you have a problem with the, I don't know, for example, the uh, ABS module, okay? And the ABS module, it could be uh, the seat belt module, or the, the, or the seat module, the, 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 power, you know, the power window module, whatever. And you basically, you, you have no community. You try and establish communication with the, uh, with the module that, that's, that's not communicating. And usually what you have, is you're going to have co faulty codes uh, uh, on, the, on the other modules. Uh, no communication with the uh, ABS module, for example. And everybody else is going to have no communication with the ABS module. So if you look at the TCM, the transmission, if you look at the ECM, you look at the everybody else, no communication with the ABS module. So the ABS module is not communicating. So you look at the network, where, what it's connected to, uh, and if you, if you definitely have uh, the terminations in there, the 60 ohms between the two, the can low and the can high, and you have the voltage, 2.5 volts, between ground and e either, either one of the, uh, of the, can, okay, the, the can low and the can high, then you have your physicality is there. The basically what you have to do then is find out why you don't have communication with the ABS module. It could be the ABS module itself is shot. Uh, it could be the, uh, the wires are, are, one of the wires is um, cut, you know, uh, somehow broken uh, and you have no communication or whatever, you know. Uh, but you deal with it. Then you know that you, 
your problem is not necessarily uh, a, a broad problem with the uh, with the can. If you have no uh, no 60 ohms between the two cables between the two wires, can low and can high, then you have to start tracking why, and in which case you're not going to have communication with a bunch of the modules. Going back into the uh, the uh, gateway that you saw before. Uh, you're gonna then you have to find out you know how many networks do you have because you could have three you could have two or three networks and if each network is going to have a, a specific uh, um, bunch of different modules and you have to find the module they're trying to establish communication with and find out why you don't have communication usually if it's a broad problem you're going to have no communication with all the modules on that particular uh, and sometimes the gateway itself is shot and it actually has communication with the other modules but not with the network that, that's uh, defective. You have to find all these problems. Basically, with what you've learned in this video, uh, you can actually do that. It is possible for you to do that. It's going to require you know, some disassembly on your end, uh, trying to uh, uh, s you know, see which, you know, where, where to find the gateway and where to, where to do this, this and that. And oftentimes, you know, the, you do have a gateway module which, uh, that does not restrict communication uh, to the scanner. So again, it's, uh, there are variations of, of this, of what we're talking about in this video. But the basic uh, knowledge that you're, gonna, that you're gaining right now with this video is going to help you uh, fix almost any, any problem uh, that's related to the network, you know, to uh, CAN networks, you know. Uh, and again, you know, we, uh, um, you know, if you have the unit that we have, it's actually, it's handy because it, it does a bunch of stuff, you know, that that usually y you have to do it manually. It's not that you need our unit, but it's, it's a good thing to have. Uh, and basically, that this is what we do in this video so that you actually learn to analyze the, uh, uh, and, uh, and pinpoint the, uh, certain factors, you know, like uh, resistance between the cables and this and that, termination resistors, uh, the whether you have a gateway or not, which, uh, how many uh, networks do you have, how many modules, what's connected to what, and so on and so forth. Anyhow, uh, we'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel, ADP Training. Uh, we suggest that you subscribe to our, ch our channel if you like it, or uh, to our website, Automotive Diagnostics and Publishing. It's actually autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com uh, you can find us on uh, on, um, on uh, Facebook you can find us uh, uh, at autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com that's our Facebook page uh, or on, on Instagram um, ADP training uh, backslash or under underscore uh, YouTube which is ADP training it's our YouTube channel okay which is basically you know anything that's automotive on the high end side, we go into the complicated issues, you know, with uh, um, uh, with our automotive technology. This is it. Okay. So anyhow, we'd like to thank you for tuning in uh, to our channel, ADP Training, and thank you for watching. This.
on the video. In today's video, we are going to uh, uh, talk about testing the CAN bus using the OBD2 health checker. Uh, the OBD2 health checker is our, our newest tool uh, design. It's, uh, it's a multiplexer for the OBD2 connector, pretty much. Uh, now, uh, as you can see on screen, uh, this is what the CAN network uh, signal should look like. Okay, so you have the CAN high and the CAN low. The CAN high is in green and the CAN low is in uh, like white or yellow, uh, depending on your, uh, on your monitor. Uh, now, this, these are the voltages more or less uh, that you should have. The, the reason I say more or less is, is because it's not uh, a set, it's not set in stone when it comes to the OBD2 uh, CAN protocol. CAN in, in general uh, does not dictate to the letter uh, the voltage values. Uh, but in cars, in automobiles, it's, this is pretty much standard, okay? You have about 2.6 volts, in, in the, that's the midpoint that you see there, and then from there, the can low triggers low, and the can high triggers high. Now, before we continue, here's a word from our sponsor, PCBWay.com. Uh, these are, uh, they make our products uh, at the factory in China, uh, PCBWay.com, and here's their website. It's uh, it's an incredible website where you can choose all your uh, specifications for your uh, uh, for your PC board. Uh, I, we make the PC boards, and we also make uh, the faceplates for our units. Uh, just click quote now and ready to go. And they also give you uh, a um, uh, like like a free uh, for five dollars you could get up to ten uh, prototype units. They're a fantastic website. They have a fantastic website. They're a great company. Their turnaround time is 24 hours or less, uh, which is incredible. Usually 24 hours and then plus the shipping, whatever you know, uh, whatever time it takes to ship it out to you. Okay, now back to uh, to our video. Um, Basically, the OBD2 uh, health DLC health checker, uh, it's a unit that has an embedded, it also has an embedded oscilloscope in it. Uh, today, we're going to study how to uh, test the CAN network. And this is, this is very important for all these U codes. On screen now, you see, as you can see, a diagram of the unit, you know, itself. Uh, and basically what it is, it's uh, the OBD2 connector is linked uh, through the uh, DLC uh, health checker um, to all the pins through a multiplexer inside. Now, for, for CAN, there's only two pins that we are concerned with, okay, which is uh, pins number 6 and 14. But now, uh, there's uh, other things for the OBD2 health checker that are important, and when it comes to CAN, which is power and ground testing and all, and all these things, but we're not going to cover that in this video. Uh, basically, what it is is that it also has a 120 ohm uh, termination resistor built in inside the unit if you want. There's a switch on the top that you use for that. Uh, so, say for example, you have no 120 ohm termination resistor, you're not going to have CAN, okay, and, and voltage uh, on the CAN. You flip that switch and it'll, it'll give you a CAN, and at least you'll be able to communicate and determine that that is your problem. There's two 120, 120 ohm termination resistors, which uh, it, it comes up to 60 ohms because they're in parallel with each other. Okay, so two 120 ohm resistors in parallel it equals 60 ohms. That's what CAN needs to communicate. It can it can work without one resistor, which will be make it 120 ohm termination. It'll work with that. That's why you, they put two resistors in there in case one fails. Uh, and so basically that's what that's but our unit actually looks at pins number uh, 6 and 14 it also uh, you can actually substitute and uh, inject voltage and the resistor in there if need be uh, now uh, again on screen now you can see the signal uh, which this is this was taken with one of our um, uh, um, uh, oscilloscopes. It's, it wasn't taken with, but it's just for sake of explaining the voltage values in there. Okay, so basically this is what you're supposed to see. You're not going to see them together because the OBD2 health checker has a single channel multiplexer in there and there's no really no reason to, to check both of them at the same time. Basically, if you uh, the unit, you don't have to poke into the wires, everything is, you can do everything just with one button in there. And now, as you can see on screen, uh, 
This is, uh, and we just wanted to show you this. This is how, how the OBD2 health checker is going to behave if you're not connected to the battery properly, okay? It'll just click on and off, on and off and off, as you can see on screen. Uh, basically, it's letting you know that there's not sufficient voltage to run the unit. Uh, and at, at that point in time, make sure you look at your connections to the battery because the unit has to be referenced at the battery. It's not that it takes power that from the battery, which it is, but it has to be referenced more than any, anything else. It's going to com compare the voltage uh, to the battery, which is that's what it means, reference. Now, going back to the functioning of this particular unit and testing uh, the DLC uh, pins number 6 and 14, uh, as you can see, we are actually... We power the unit, it goes through a check, and you can see all, here all the, the, the relays clicking in, inside there. And basically all you have to do is just turn that knob and go into pin number six. Go, of course, you're gonna go in with your scanner. There is a Y connector that uh, comes with a unit where you can plug in your scanner together with the OBD2 uh, DLC health checker. Uh, and as you can see, we are actually uh, going into the can uh, system. This was actually a Ford vehicle. Uh, anything after 2006 has to be CAN. So it's going to be CAN if it's 2006 or newer. Okay. And as you can see on screen, uh, the voltage where we're checking, uh, this is uh, pin number six, <coughs> which uh, pin number six is CAN high. That's why you see 3.8 volts because you're switching. That's the upper side. Remember, the, the viewing, the LCD is going to give you a snapshot you know, of the, um, of the voltage. And as you can see, uh, we are basically graphing uh, with, the, with the scanner. So we're communicating uh, back and forth. And you can actually see pin number six. And we're also going to show you pin number 14 uh, on the oscilloscope, the built-in oscilloscope in there. Uh, remember that the scope is going to, you can make all kinds of uh, measurements in there. Uh, because it gives you, if you look at the, the scope, it has uh, texting. It has the, that text on the top that actually measures the minimum and maximum and this and that. And you'll be able to go through all your uh, your measurements in there. And basically, this, this is, I mean, this is 100%. Uh, and if you, what we're doing right now is we're expanding the time base. And you can actually see the single pulses uh, for each can um uh, network. So each one of those pulses are either 0 or 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, or 0, 0, 0, whatever, you know, uh, basically. So that's, uh, that's how the, the unit communicates. It toggles between 2.6, and in this particular case, the upper side will be 3.6 more or less. Remember, it's not always the same on every car. It could be 3.8. Uh, it could be even a little higher than that, uh, depending on the vehicle that you're working on, because CAN doesn't really specify 100% the value, the voltage values, but that's more or less what you're going to see uh, right here. And so uh, that's pretty much it, you know. So you don't have to do anything. All you got to do is go in, uh, graph your 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 pins, uh, connect with the scanner, and see if you have a connection. If you don't have communication, if you don't see the signal on the scope side, and you don't see anything, uh, you know, when you connect the scanner. Basically, you have a problem. So you, there, are, there are things that you could do. Uh, you can actually go uh, and switch the unit, uh, the, the switch on the top, which actually injects uh, 120 ohm resistor and voltage into the into the into the uh, uh, CAN network, and then go from there. Uh, so it's basically, you know, uh, it's a done deal. This this is a, a turnkey operation. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to poke in with a with a scope. You don't have to buy a scope. You don't have to do anything. If you have a scope, which I highly recommend, it's nice. Uh, but it's still, you know, you would have to go into the wire, to the wires in the back and poke into the wires and this and that. Uh, the second thing that you should do when it comes to CAN uh, vehicles is you're going to have to, if it doesn't communicate, one of the modules is shorted. And then you would have to start disconnecting modules. Here on screen, you can see the ga a gateway. In the in the uh, in the diagram, if uh, if the module, if the if the vehicle has a gateway, and this is now common on the Durangos, the new Durangos, there is a connector that you have to uh, buy, purchase, and this is only for the Durango, uh, where you uh, disconnect the gateway, you connect this connector, and it actually the bypasses the gateway uh, because the gateway is the one on these Durangos, and that 
I'm sure they're gonna do it on other cars too. Let's see how that works out. Uh, whereby you know the the gateway is the one is the one that actually authorizes the modules, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's the same principle. You're still gonna need the CAN to communicate with intermodule uh, networks. You know with the gateway. Uh, so basically, uh, you're gonna have to get a, the little connector. It's not too expensive, uh, and basically you still need uh, the DLC health ch checker. Uh, uh, to communicate, uh, to find out the faults. Uh, in this case now, we on screen, it's again what we've explained before. Once you connect, if you're missing the 120 volt, uh, 120 ohm uh, resistors, uh, you still, you're gonna see uh, uh, about 2.5, 2.6 volts uh, when, the, when the network is not communicating. That's what you're gonna see. Like if you don't see that, then there's something wrong, and that's what you know, our unit pretty much uh, injects voltage and those termination resistors. Uh, in this case, you need at least 60 ohms in there. That's usually what you need. But 120 ohm is what we inject into the, uh, um, you actually connect that in parallel with, with, the, with the CAN network and you need that to communicate, okay? So it'll at least have communication, you know, uh, with the network. Again, we would like to thank you for tuning into our channel, ADP Training and our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Uh, see what it's all about if you want to find out more about the OBD2 health, uh, health checker. And uh, basically, we'd like to thank you for tuning in, as you always do. Leave comments, uh, leave us a thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you, whatever you, you think we're worth, you know. And uh, at the end of the, uh, the video, you're going to see an AQR code. All you got to do is scan it uh, with the PayPal app. And basically, you can donate anything that you want to, to, uh, to our channel here, which is free. We don't charge for this channel. Okay, so thank you for tuning in, and thank you for watching. Now, the OBD2 health checker, as you can see on screen, and we're, we're not going to go too deep into it. Uh, it's a uh, DLC uh, multiplexed uh, testing tool for the uh, data link connector, the DLC. You don't have to jump any wires. You don't have to do anything. Just connect and check. Uh, it's basically a unit, uh, you just briefly going to, you know, mention it here, and we're going to show you how to use it in this video to test the CAN. And uh, basically what, uh, what the, the, the tool, you know, what it is, it's a uh, multiplexed unit. It has a 16-channel multiplexer inside there, um, and it has a, a small computer that with a whole bunch of tests, which, uh, and as you can see on screen, it basically you use it by turning the knob and pressing it to uh, select the specific pin or test. Uh, as you see uh, on screen, uh, we're, we're choosing uh, to test number uh, pins number six, which is a CAN uh, pin, number 13, 14, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to view, you can view it uh, on the, on the uh, included uh, oscilloscope um, uh, on top of the unit. Uh, it's multiplex, so you don't have to do anything. Basically, you just choose uh, turn, turn the knob, and press uh, the button, and that's how you pick the uh, the pin that you want to go. Anyhow, uh, before we continue, we'd like to um, give a word to our sponsor, PCBWay.com. Uh, they are our factory. They make, we design the stuff ourselves, and we actually get it made with them. They make it for us. Uh, PCBWay.com. They have a 10-unit uh, prototype for, for five dollars, which is incredible. Basically, as you can see on screen, you choose the, uh, the length and the width of the uh, PC board. Uh, you click all the uh, specifications that you want, the double-sided, uh, the layers, the color, uh, you name it. And they even have, a, um, uh, if you look at it, they have aluminum, a selection for aluminum, uh, which not everybody has. Uh, this is, if you, you want to build a, a, a panel, uh, face, you know, that's, this is very useful. Very few people do that. Anyhow, so you click uh, quote now, uh, calculate, and it, it calculates right away. Uh, they have a turnover of 24 hours uh, plus the shipping time, whatever it is. PCBWay.com. Give them a, uh, uh, a link and, and, you know, uh, they're fantastic. Now back to our video on screen, as you can see, um, we went into the, this vehicle which had a check engine light and the customer complained that uh, he took it to a whole bunch of places and there's nothing that he could, uh, I mean, they, they, they didn't know what to look for. Uh, when it comes to net network diagnostics, lots of shops 
don't know how to do it, uh, or they get they get uh, for some reason they get confused, or I don't know. But that's just the way it is, you know. Uh, it is very simple to do network network diagnostics. You yeah, you need a scope. Uh, you need a uh, and that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, and you need to uh, go under the DLC connector and link to the uh, the wires uh, under the dash or, or so on and so forth. In this particular case, we're using the OBD2 DLC, uh, DLC health checker. As you can see, we had code for class two um, data link, which is General Motors name for their network. Uh, it is a uh, basically G only GM uses this type of network. As a rule, the uh, class two uh, data um, system uses a single wire that toggles between ground and seven volts, although not always, okay? So the best thing you can do is uh, check whatever GM uh, vehicle you're working on, go and check the wiring diagram immediately and find out on which pin on the DLC the class two network is running and that way you'll be able to test the whole thing. On screen you can see the this particular wiring diagram and it's a it's a single wire that goes from one module to the next uh, and ground that's that's pretty much the scheme that uh, GM uh, uses and as you can see on screen we have now the diagram that we use uh, that we're actually using this is a diagram that more or less you know just to show you how it works as I said before it's a single wire uh, system uh, that goes from one module uh, to the other. Now, we start by doing our diagnostics by connecting the uh, uh, OBD2 um, uh, DLC health checker to the battery, and it goes through its uh, routine, as you can see. It actually checks out all the relays and all the, uh, um, it goes through a checkup, you know, pretty much. And uh, we pretty much uh, start by viewing uh, the different pins on the DLC. In this particular case, nothing. I got nothing from any of the pins. Uh, and basically, you know, I said, well, you know, there must be something else uh, uh, wrong with the car. Now, in this particular case, it was easy because the customer had told me before that there was an issue with starting the vehicle um, and something about the body module, something like that. And he had to jump something in the, on the relay box. And so I, I said, you know, I asked him, you know, so what do you jump? Just show me what you jump. Just <laughs> and basically what he was, he was jumping. Uh, somehow somebody told him that if you jump the CAN bus uh, wire to a battery, uh, it would start. I don't know why exactly the car was, the vehicle was starting when it, when it was doing that. Uh, but basically that just shocked. I, I'm guessing he, it shocked the, the CAN module that whatever module was giving the problem which would, would, it was a body module uh, and then uh, basically you know the body module was knocking down the can and the, the, it was grounded completely uh, I removed the ground and replaced the body module and then uh, as you can see um, uh, further uh, after we, we did the repair and, uh, and the reprogram we had to re reprogram in the, the body module we went and we went again and we uh, connected our DLC uh, checker um, uh, and again it goes through the you know the routine you know of a power up r routine and checks everything and sure enough we went to pin in this particular car uh, was on pin sometimes it's on pin number uh, the class 2 uh, network which are proprietary pin but I think on this one it was pin number 3 so basically we started by uh, establishing communication with a vehicle uh, and this, we're just showing you, our, you know, well, after we, we did the repair, uh, I, had a, I knew I was already getting communication because I tried it before, you know, once I, I did the repair. And basically what you do uh, is you, uh, why connect, uh, you know, a scanner with the uh, DLC connector and connect the, the, um, uh, the, the OBD2 DLC, uh, DLC uh, health checker. And as you can see, that's our CAN. Okay, it's uh, it toggles again between uh, zero, 0 and 7 in this particular car. Uh, it doesn't have to be, sometimes it toggles higher than that, uh, depending on the year. Uh, but anyhow, so this is, uh, uh, once uh, we did the repair, you know, everything came back to normal. Uh, we got rid of all, all the codes that we had before uh, uh, with the CAN communication. And basically, you know, it, it was 100%, you know. 
Again, you know, uh, this is just, you know, what this tool can do. It's a very useful tool. Uh, we went into, into uh, uh, I mean, doing this type of repair, it's a nightmare, you know, if you have to go under the, or just clamp into it, because it, it takes a long, long time. Might as well just plug into the DLC connector and do all your diagnostics from there. If you have uh, a, a CAN or a network problem of any kind. Remember, this this is a GM. It could have been, if it was a little newer, it would have been uh, CAN. Uh, and again, this, this tool can do all the 16 pins. Some of these uh, pins are proprietary and some of them are not. You know, they're just standard. Anyhow, we'd like to thank you uh, for tuning in to our channel, ADP Training and go to our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Uh, post a comment, uh, give us your feedback. Uh, it's a free channel. You can actually, at the end, you're gonna see a, an AQR code uh, where you can actually donate if you wanna donate to our channel and keep it free, uh, basically. Anyhow, uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, thank you for watching. This channel to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about uh, designing the OBD2 uh, health checker. The OBD2 health checker uh, is our latest piece of equipment that we uh, actually we've actually introduced. It has a built-in uh, oscilloscope and a navigation uh, LCD screen. But before we go into that, a word from our sponsor, uh, PCBWay.com. PCBWay it's a uh, uh, factory for PC boards. Uh, they are uh, top of the line, state of the art um, pa factory that you can actually go um, and order your PC boards. They do have a $5 uh, uh, prototyping, which is very nice. As you can see on screen, you can actually order your PC boards. It's very easy to get a quote, very fast, very faster than any, any other website that I've ever seen. Uh, if you look at the screen, uh, basically, you can actually uh, order SMD stencils, PCB assembly, uh, flexible PCBs, and advanced PC boards. Uh, you just input your the size of your board, the layers, and right away you get a quote. Uh, if uh, basically what you do, once you input all your uh, basic information, and it's going to ask you a couple more things, and, and we're going to see that next. Uh, hit qu uh, qu quote now, and that's it. Uh, on screen, it's a uh, the, their website, as you can see, and you can actually choose your layers, the size of the PC boards, uh, whether the PC board, uh, if you want an aluminum PC board, you can actually choose it on your web, uh, on their website, as you can see. Uh, FR4 is the, the, you know, the main uh, option that you get. You know, everybody pretty much makes it F F FR4. Uh, which is a regular PC board. But you also have that option to do aluminum and a couple of other options, uh, as you can see on the side with the yellow arrows. Uh, you select the thickness of the PC board, pretty much anything you want in there. Uh, choose all your, your finishing, you know, the colors of the stencils, uh, of the, uh, the silk screening, uh, and that's it. Just click the quote button, as you can see on screen, and done. Uh, you, you can pretty much, uh, and again, uh, they do have a special uh, for uh, for prototyping, you know, you can order. I think you can order up to twenty for thirty dollars. You know, uh, prototyping, which is very nice. Within twenty four hours, you're gonna get your PC board. That's how fast they are, and they keep you know, sending you texts. As far as uh, actually, you go to the website, and they they keep updating you as far as uh, the process. You know, if you're in an engineering process, if you're in a uh, manufacturing, and so on and so forth. As you can see on screen here. This is uh, the order that we got for the, uh, uh, the DLC, the OBD2 DLC uh, health checker. Uh, this particular uh, unit, when we started out, and again, most of our designs, you know, they actually, it takes us probably about two years. This one took us about a year, one, one year and eight months to, to develop completely. And as you can see on screen, we start out from a, uh, uh, on a computer designing the board uh, before we even do that, we actually do the prototyping for the circuit, and we, on a breadboard, we, we pretty much do all the uh, uh, the components, uh, and then we make uh, a schematic, and then from there we go into what you see on screen, uh, which is the actual design for the board. Uh, in uh, in the software that we use, uh, we can actually see what the board is going to look like before we even make it, before we build it. 
this uh, this is a very nice uh, uh, unit that we actually it's very complicated it's got a lot of stuff inside uh, now the OBD2 health checker uh, it's exactly what it sounds like it'll do uh, stress testing on your on pins number four and five which are the grounds sensor ground and chassis ground this is very important because if your sensor ground is not proper uh, that means your computer is not grounded uh, your ECM is not grounded properly and you're going you're gonna to have all kinds of problems this thing would actually stress through a 10 ohm resistor uh, inside the unit you don't have to do anything just connect the unit to the battery and connect it to the OBD2 connector okay now inside the unit you have these two resistors with a, you know a lot of different components that actually stress it'll inject 12 volt through this 10 ohm resistor to pins 4 and 5 so it's going to draw about 2 amps through pins 4 and 5 okay now that's one it also has the same thing for pins number 16 which is also important uh, because pins number 16 it's important to, to drive all the uh, uh, your scanners or this and that and a bunch of other stuff too that you, you get from there and it will do the same thing it'll, it'll stress test uh, through a 10 ohm resistor to ground uh, pins number 16 it has a CAN bus inside the unit what do we mean by that well exactly what it says there is a CAN bus that actually injects a CAN bus voltage and the uh, termination resistor 120 ohm termination resistor to pin 6 and 14 those are the two pins for the can uh, in every car built um, after I think 2007 was the first year that they, they uh, mandated can to be used on cars everybody every car now uses can after 2006 2007 some of the of the uh, Europeans way back in 2002 were already using can uh, and as you can see it actually uh, on the, in this but in this next uh, view it actually you can see that the uh, the OBD2 connector in, in close-up where it actually uh, it, it injects power and ground through the uh, to the uh, pins number four and five and pins number uh, 16 and it also injects the CAN bus termination resistor and voltage uh, through pins uh, uh, 6 and 14 uh, you can actually see all this stuff in the provided in the built-in uh, oscilloscope uh, this is a multiplex this is important for you to understand what it means it is a multiplex oscilloscope so as you can see on screen you actually choose your pin uh, by turning the little knob on the bottom uh, and pushing it that's how you actually navigate the unit and you can actually choose your pin or your test uh, uh, for, for this particular unit uh, and say you choose pins number six the, which is uh, the can pin you'll be able to see on the oscilloscope pin number six instantaneously on top of that it'll it'll uh, also assess whatever you're getting on pins number six which should be around 2.6 volts take or you know more more or less not exactly but more or less so uh, and that's the can voltage uh, it'll assess it and give give uh, give you a uh, the, the the value on the uh, on the, on the LCD screen but you can also see it at the same time on the oscilloscope so it's a built-in uh, scope with a bunch of uh, uh, automated testing right on the unit but now that we're not going to go too deep on uh, the operation of this uh, unit now uh, that we're going to make another video actually a bunch of videos for this particular unit uh, but this is the go-to tool uh, whenever you have an issue with sensors uh, where well you get a bunch of codes for different sensors that probably means that your ECM ground is shot uh, when, you, when you get U codes no communication code this is the, the, the strong uh, part of, of this particular tool this is not a scanner it is simply an electronic breakout box for the OBD2 connector with built-in uh, tests uh, and a built-in multiplexer and we're going to use the uh, OBD2 uh, DLC health checker now before we go too deep into um, our diode ripple, we're just going to go into um, the difference between AC and DC. And basically, DC uh, current flows only one way, uh, and there are no specific uh, differences uh, between uh, different voltage ranges, unless it's a varying DC. In this particular case, as we see on screen here, uh, we do have an AC component. Uh, riding on top of, uh, of the uh, of the DC waveform 
Uh, and why do we say it's writing? Because the zero line is all the way towards the bottom, the little arrow on the left hand side, that's the zero line. Uh, the top line, of course, is going to be charging voltage, and this is this is a waveform capture right from the uh, from the vehicle while, uh, when it was idling. Uh, and the the little humps that you see on the top are exaggerated because what we did was we actually we did the test with an alternator that we actually cut the the diode inside. We took it apart. We we cut the diode. Uh, that's what you would see when it has a a, a faulty diode. It was cut. Uh, but it's the same as a faulty diode. And as you can see on screen um, right now, the, the difference between the top and the bottom crest, remember you're not supposed to see, you're supposed to see almost a flat line, a flat line uh, on top of the 13.6 the, the charging voltage, uh, whatever you're getting for a charging voltage should be over battery vo uh, voltage anyways. So that's the ripple. So the difference between the top and the bottom and uh, you're going to see a close-up of this uh, in a little while. And as you can see right now, the difference between the top and the bottom crest, that is the ripple voltage. Uh, it should not go above, worst case scenario, above 300 milliamps, maybe half, uh, I'm sorry, 300 millivolts, not amps, or maybe half a volt or 0.5. That's maximum. I don't even like to see 0.5. So if I see something above 0.3, or 300 millivolts, uh, I know there's something wrong. The, uh, and it could be two things. It could be either the battery, that's not that's sh semi-shorted, it's not taking a charge. Uh, even though it's the car is starting, it could be, so this is a good indicator, and this you can see with the OBD2 health checker. Uh, it's a good indicator. You don't have to plug in a, an oscilloscope. It already has a built-in scope in there, okay? Which is, this is tr tremendous. Uh, uh, usefulness and as uh, going back this is what you would see you know on a uh, uh, on a on a, the, the, the ripple voltage you know the difference between the top and the bottom the unit has a test that actually uh, determines or actually measures the difference between one and the other and the difference if it's above maximum of 0.5 volts or half a volt I don't like to see 5 volts anyway anything above 300 mi uh, millivolts uh, we have a faulty uh, a faulty dial and as we can, we can see where the unit is powering up uh, and this big goes through a, a whole bunch of tests uh, now the unit and we have other videos for this particular unit uh, it goes from uh, pins number 1 through 16 then it has a couple of tests uh, for, for the uh, for the ground pins uh, pins number 4 5 pin number 16 has a stress test too for the for the for the for the power pin and then it goes into to the diode uh, ripple and as you can see this is the has a multiplexer inside and uh, you can actually see uh, right away you're going to see on the scope you don't have to set anything up all you got to do is connect it to the obd2 uh, connector and this is what you would see this is the actual test it tells you how it's going to do the test and it'll do it'll do the test completely you know uh, It'll give you a minimum, actually, it'll give you the difference, minimum and maximum, it'll give you the difference between uh, the minimum and maximum. As you can see on screen, this particular case is 0.44, uh, which is not quite 0.5, uh, but it's definitely a, it's, it's an open uh, diode, pretty much. It's like a, like a faulty diode, you know. So again, you know, it's very specific, uh, that this particular test. And uh, it, the unit goes a long way into graphing or scoping all the pins on the uh, uh, on the DLC connector. You don't have to do anything. It'll it'll graph pins number one through sixteen. You don't have to do anything. You will know right away. It has signal injection uh, for the can. Uh, for the CAN boss, it has a bunch of stuff, anyhow. So, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our channel, ADP Training. And, of course, visit our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. We have a bunch of free stuff that we give out every month, you know, like a book, you know, uh, a software, you name it. Uh, and we're always putting out, you know, uh, advice and tips on how to do things, anyhow. So, uh, we're, thank you for tuning in to our channel, ADP uh, Training, and thank you for watching. This channel is for do-it-yourselfers, as well as professional auto repair technicians. We present all the content using the latest CG animation techniques, on-hands video, and how-to, tips and techniques. We encourage you to subscribe to this channel now. 
once subscribed, anytime we upload a new automotive tip, secret, or technology video, you will be notified. Finally, by subscribing, you will also be part of our weekly freebies. Yes, we're constantly giving away lots of free merchandise. Automotive Diagnostics and Publishing's Mandy Concepcion, the owner of this channel, is one of the most prolific auto technology authors on the web. At any moment in time, we may offer a free book, Kindle e-book, Android app, one of our own diagnostic equipment, or even auto repair software that runs on your PC. Subscribe now free of charge, learn lots of automotive technology secrets, and win free stuff. It doesn't get any better than that. Thanks for watching, and enjoy.